When I was about six or seven, I used to take swimming lessons in a local pool after finishing school twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays. On Fridays, my mum would take me into McDonald's to get a milkshake as a treat afterwards. I'd sit and drink my shake, then we'd head home, no problems. This day was different. I'd finished my shake and wanted the toilet before we left, so I went in. Into the ladies on my own, as I usually did, I noticed that one cubicle was locked and I just thought nothing of it. Went in the second, did my thing, flushed and noticed that the person in the other cubicle was unlocking the door too. I didn't hear them flush or use a bathroom. I turned around and it was a man, old, disgusting, tall. Why was he here? I innocently said. This is for ladies only, mister. And he said, Why do you think I'm here, little girl? It's music to my ears. Where's your mummy? He took a few strands of my hair and twirled them in between his fingers and reached a hand to grab mine by the shoulder. I shook out of his grip and ran as fast as I could back to my mum, crying. I told her what happened. She told an attendant, but... By the time they had checked, he managed to slip out unnoticed into the busy streets. I hope he never managed to get his hands on any other little girls. This happened last year on Halloween. A lot of creepy stuff happens on Halloween and this was no exception. I'm 5 foot tall, 150 pounds and not a very intimidating figure. I look a little more on the feminist side of things and I'm transgender. I was out on Halloween with my girlfriend at the time. We'd gone into the city, we're from a college out in a small town, to go to a haunted house and we were walking back to the train station from the haunted house at about 12.30am to go home. We were both dressed up like witches, both wearing high heels and I had my purse with me. My girlfriend's hands were cold so I was holding her hand and we were walking very close together. The city was almost a ghost town as we were walking back. We saw almost nobody. We were walking along a main road just going under an overpass when a car full of 20 something drove by us going the opposite way. A guy hung out the window and shouted ugliest lesbian couple ever. Of course, both of us were offended but we just kept walking and the car drove off up the street. We get shit like that all the time. We were about two, maybe three blocks from the train station and this train station is in the heart of the city with a lot of elevated highways and railways and overpasses surrounding it so it tends to be very shadowed, especially at night. We heard the sound of a car engine off to our right across the street and at this point my girlfriend whispers to me, it's the same car. I glanced over and it was the same car as earlier. The people had gotten out of the car and were kind of milling about, but I could tell you they were looking at us. I was very nervous at this point, being both queer and transgender you faced a lot of potential violence and hate crimes. All the stories about trans people and lesbians, gays, whoever getting beaten up, even to death. These are all ideas that flash through my mind. I was terrified. About a year ago, my dad told me that I had to carry something for self-defense, but instead of mace, he gave me a flashlight. It's about 8 inches and very sturdy, it's made of steel and incredibly bright. This thing will temporarily blind you for a good minute I'd say. I would know, I accidentally blinded myself with it. And it has a raised edge that would definitely hurt like a bitch if you're hit with it. I reached into my purse and pulled out my flashlight, gripping it tight in my free hand. 
There was the sound of breaking glass behind us and we both looked over our shoulders to see the group of people crossing the street towards us. There was broken glass in the street and from what I could make out, in the street lights, one of the people was holding a broken beer bottle. I said to my girlfriend, we need to get out of here, now. We ran the remaining two blocks to the train station but not very quickly, we are in high hills and the entire time we could hear the group running after us, heavy steps shouting slurs, maybe 50 feet behind us the whole way. We got to the train station and immediately bolted for the brightest area with the most people around and we looked around for this group, but they didn't come into the station. It hit me really hard then how close we had come to being statistics. In the earliest months of 2014, I started dating my current boyfriend. I ended up staying at his house multiple nights out of every week. Eventually, I ended up living there, staying at a mobile home with him and his father. The neighbourhood itself was fairly creepy, one of those unnamed country areas that branch from a main road. Richard, my boyfriend's dad, would tell me stories about how the entire street was owned by one man. A guy who had gotten old in recent years and let the land go. As a result of the field beside of our mobile home was overgrown with weeds and old trees. He also told me about the strange occurrences of which he attributed to two things. Aliens or kids from another neighbourhood. Despite his warnings and how creepy the area was, I couldn't take him too seriously. After all, his biggest concern was aliens. I was unemployed for a short period of time after moving in which left me alone in the house while Cody, my boyfriend and his dad worked. I spent most of my days putting in job applications, cleaning up the house and reading online. I guess you could say that my presence at the house was pretty predictable, which is the only explanation to this occurrence. On a day as unremarkable as any, while I was sitting reading a book in our bedroom, I heard a car pull up in the driveway. The sound was pretty distinctive, considering the area wasn't paved, but rather made up of gravel. Thinking this is Cody coming home early from work, I slipped some shoes on and started for the front door which was on the other side of the house. Before I could reach it, a knock was sounded against the glass. The front of the trailer had a sunroof, basically a front porch that is encased with windows, making it so that you had to go through two doors before stepping into the living room. Being paranoid as he was, Richard would usually lock the sunroom before leaving for work unless he was in a huge hurry. Still thinking that maybe my boyfriend had come home from work early, I opened the first door to let him in. It wasn't Cody at the door, but rather a short Hispanic man. He smiled at me through the glass and nodded, almost as if I was exactly who he'd expected to be answering the door. I noticed that he had one hand behind his back and the other almost hanging to his side. I tried not to think too much about it. Behind him in our carport was a small white truck and I could hear the engine was still running. Can I help you? I tried to make my voice sound as strong as I possibly could but come out shaky. I'm with the garbage company, I'm here to pick up your trash cans. I blinked, knowing immediately that that was a lie. Yes, it was common for the garbage company to pick up the trash cans if the bill hadn't been paid, but I'd gone with Cody the week before to pay it, not to mention the drivers never knocked on the door, they only took the cans and left. I glanced to my left, seeing that our trash cans were still where we always kept them, on the outside of the sunroom, somewhat behind the house. They're right there. If you need them, then take them out. 
my voice was a bit more assertive, causing the, my visitor's smile to turn into a frown. Can I come in? he asked. I, I didn't verbally answer, I just shook my head. My heart dropped as I watched him reach up and grab the hand of the glass door, pulling on it to open it. The door clicked. Obviously locked. He tried again, this time harder, causing the metal to creak. I jumped back into the house and slammed the front door, locking it with purpose. It was so quiet in the house that I only noticed two sounds. My heart pounding and the doorknob to a back door jiggling. There was no way it could have been the guy at the front porch. He wouldn't have had the time to get to the back door, even if he ran. I'm calling the fucking police! I yelled through the door, still baffled at the fact that this had all happened in broad daylight. I could hear the truck drive through the carport in, into our backyard immediately after that. I took a moment to look through the blinds of the window, watching as a separate man jumps off the back porch and into the passenger seat. To this day, I'm convinced that these men knew I was home alone and this was a carefully planned attack. One of them was trying to distract me, being creepy at the front door while the other guy, he tried to break into the back door, being weaker. I still don't know what front door guy was hiding behind his back. All I can say is that I'm forever thankful of how paranoid my father-in-law is. Who knows what could have happened if he hadn't locked the sunroom door. This is insane and happened to me earlier today. I guess a little backstory might help. I worked from home, I live with my fiance, but she is gone throughout the day to attend a nearby university. I'm home and work all day. My day went like normal, I was just on the internet a little bit, catching up on news and so on before I started to get to work for the day. I didn't have any music on or anything so I'm still not sure how I didn't hear what happened next. Apparently, at some point, this guy decided for whatever reason, I have no clue, to try our doorknob. Clearly it was left unlocked, as otherwise this guy would be quite boring. So this guy somehow manages to do this without me hearing. He opens the door, gets into the house and closes it. All without me hearing even a creak or anything. Well, I'm still not entirely sure, this recollection of events tells me that he may have deliberately been entering my house, perhaps even trying to do so quietly. So I have no idea there's this guy in my house. I'm sitting in my office reading Reddit when I hear the door to the room I am in opening. It was just about time for my fiance to come home for lunch, so naturally I imagined it was her. Now, many times I don't even bother to look back at her while she's coming in. For some reason, today I decided to look back. But I was not met with this gaze of my fiancé. Instead, it was some random guy standing in my doorway, as if he believed it was his own place or something. For a couple of seconds, my mind went blank and as if it was resolving exactly what to do in the situation. The guy didn't seem inherently threatening or harmful, but you can never be too careful. Looking back at the entire situation, it was very threatening in of itself, but not only did some random guy enter my house and proceed to explore my house, so to speak, and when he found me, he didn't react in any way, for instance, well, I'm really sorry, this is the wrong house, really sorry. He just stood there, not making eye contact. He really seemed off in his own world in so many ways, repeating, Sorry man, I'm sorry, really sorry. You should also note at this point that I'm almost in nude, just wearing my underwear, so my first reaction is 
just embarrassment and the idea that I can't get up or he'll almost see me naked. And with this predicament of being almost entirely naked and not wanting to be in such a state, rather than doing what I would have done in any other situation, get up and confront him, I inquired, who the fuck are you? Moves forwards a bit, I repeat my question. I am glaring at this man and telling him, get the fuck out of my house now. I kept repeating things along this line in general throughout, and he would mumble, I'm sorry man, I'm really sorry, I'm sorry man, sorry. After a few times I started to immediately and legitimately feel very scared. This guy has not only entered the incorrect house or worse intentionally entered my house for some reasons. He's now seemingly ignoring all my requests to leave and he's failing to answer to who he is or why he's here. At this point, my adrenaline takes over and you no longer feel embarrassed or fear or anything of that kind or any other. You snap into a state of, well, don't know why this guy's here but He's not going to leave unless I do something, Ken. I'm going to do something or fucking die trying. I jumped up out of my chair, grabbed the cheap fold-up chair next to my desk and wielded it at him, jabbing it forwards towards him. I didn't actually hit him though. I figured that maybe he was just insane and needed an incentive to get the fuck out, which by this time, I was quite glad to be given him. He had me all wound up at this point and I was seriously about to start hurting. I never did hurt him or hit him, which I'm proud of, but truthfully, he was very lucky. Many people would not have hesitated at all to do anything like that. They probably would have done something far worse. Never in my life did I expect I'd have to coral an unwanted man out of my house while almost naked. Truly a bizarre experience. Over the Christmas break, I had a pretty disturbing story that I have yet to tell my parents because of the possible danger that would ensue. As I moved from East Texas back to Dallas, I had my adopted brother who's African American, with me to tag along and keep me company during the drive. I attended SFA and if you know anything about the deep south, especially Texas, a lot of creepy stuff goes down there. Anyways, we were driving pretty late. My parents bounced before dinner to head home with most of my belongings and I told them that me and my little brother would eat dinner first and then head that way. Soon after, I needed gas, so I stopped into some rinky dinky gas station spot to fill up with gas. I've always been on high alert at night, and I let my brother know that no matter what anybody says, don't let them in the car, for God's sake. So, as I started going inside to stock up on snacks and other stuff to get us through the next three hours, I realised that. The gas station was closed, yet I wondered why the lights inside would be on. Right as I turned around, I noticed a guy across the street looking at my car, and through that I thought to myself, that's really weird. Seeing this guy out of nowhere, the hair on the back of my neck stands up, and I start feeling like there's something fishy going on. It was like he had walked right out of the woods, and beknownst to me at the time, this was a trap to lure victims in. As I head back to the car with my eyes, never leaving this man across the street, I tell my brother to slowly open the glove box and retrieve my .45 Ruger from its holster. He gives it to me and I remain calm. Thankfully, my family's knowledge of gun safety helped us avoid some very dangerous situations. As a man crossed, then approaches a car, I get a better look at him. He's faulty and scruffy, some redneck guy with a dirty white beater under a cheap black zip hoodie. 
He had scars and scratches and marks all over his face. Many of his teeth were missing and what remained were yellow. I'm thinking to myself, oh hell no. Usually this profile is of that of a meth user slash dealer and I know how dangerous these people can be. This man comes up and starts a conversation. Really awkward one at that. Howdy. Is that old gas station there closed? I say yes, well, still glancing around, but the lights are still on for some reason. He then tells me that he works there and he can help me inside. I look and notice that there is not one person that works in there. I told him no thank you. Hey, the light's on. We are in there. I can fill her up for you. Come on, bring your little brother inside with you as he begins to scratch his body and I'm now about to nope the fuck out of there. I sit there in silence as this man doesn't even look at me but is silently observing my little brother the whole time when all of a sudden I see two shadows appear behind him. There were two other men behind the big trash cans and then all of a sudden he blurted out How much for the black boy? I'm taken back from what he just asked me and I ask him what does he mean and this is what really scares me. He begins smiling with his jack-o'-lantern teeth in such a crazy evil way. He never even replied, just pulled that smile. Never have I been so angered from remarks that this man made to me. The shadow begins to walk closer to me and I get the urge of anger and being horrified as I pull out my pistol and tell him to walk back into the forest with his buddies. I used rather awful language after that and told them I would blow their pig brains all over the gravel. His expression changed to that of an annoyed mood and immediately they sprinted across the street back into the darkness of the woods. We get in the car and thankfully my brother was playing on his iPhone and the whole time he didn't even blink twice about it, just thought it was normal people talking for a second I guess. We drove down the road for another mile and there's another gas station and I immediately get mad at myself for putting us in that situation. I contemplate that these guys wanted to trap us in the gas station convenience store and God knows do what to us. And how do I not know if there actually was more in the convenience store?